Space has always been interesting to us, and wealthy people love to visit it. For the military, though, it could be a new battlefield. Today, countries like the US, Russia, and China are constantly improving their skills in this quiet but fierce race to be the best in space. There have been rumors recently in the cosmic community that the US is about to show a stellar invention that will put them ahead of other countries in the race. Adding a laser-based space weapon to the Space Force's arsenal is a big step forward, and it has the ability to completely change the way wars are fought today. Explore with us how this American laser space weapon shocked everyone. As a part of the American Armed Forces, the United States Space Force, USSF, is in charge of all space-related issues in the US. This country's path to freedom is a fascinating one. Before it became a separate dress service, the USSF was called the Air Force Space Command and worked for the US Army from 1982 to 2019. Before Donald Trump became president, there was a change in position that was similar to how the Air Force is organized. The Space Force became a real organization in December 2019. It was a sign that the US understood how important space would be in modern fighting. We hope that this never comes to life, but this clearly shows how important room is from a strategic point of view. As we learn more about the Space Force, let's not forget that it is still the USC's tiniest armed service. There are about 6,434 people working for the Navy and 77 spacecraft to support them. However, the Air Force has over 5,000 manned planes, 406 intercontinental ballistic missiles, and over 650,000 military and civilian employees. It is important to note that the United States gives a big chunk of its budget to the armed forces. This gives the Space Force access to a lot of modern technology equipment and billions of dollars. Defense News said that the Space Force's launch estimate was a staggering $2 billion. By 2024, prices were expected to reach an even more shocking $13 billion. In this time range, the number of employees is also expected to rise to 15,000. The government spends a lot of money on keeping many systems running smoothly. These include the GPS military satellite communications, missile warning systems, space intelligence networks, and satellite control networks. Also under their control is the Boeing X-37B reusable robotic spaceship, which is a very interesting piece of technology. In an interesting turn of events, the world's space economy is expected to grow from $450 million to an amazing $1 trillion in just 20 years. It shows how important space travel and business are becoming. The Space Force reached a major milestone in March 2020. In its first official launch, a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket lifted a military communications satellite into space in 2021. A group of Space Force members, affectionately known as Guardians, completed their first tactically responsive launch mission and successfully placed the Takeworld 2 satellite into low Earth orbit. This project showed how much they wanted to make the US more flexible and quick to act, both in space and in the area, just a few miles above the Earth's surface. It could be said that the Space Force was created in reaction to what looks like an increasing war of satellites especially when looking at the competition between the US, China, and Russia in the world of politics. When China launched an experiment satellite in 2013, it paved the way for a big step forward in space technology. The name of the spacecraft was Exion, which means experiment. No hints were given about what the experiment was about. Xion's acts were the only thing that made it clear. People saw it move around near a smaller satellite and cast a shade over it for a while. AGI Analytical Graphics Incar was keeping a close eye on what the Exion satellites were doing. They were most amazed when the smaller satellites seemed to disappear and then resurface on their radars. Radar systems like these are known for being reliable, so bugs weren't likely to happen. After more research, it was shockingly found that Xion had grappling arms that it used to frequently pull the smaller satellite out of orbit and then put it back in. An anti-satellite weapon also known as an ACET, is a type of space weapon like this one that is meant to disable or destroy enemy satellites, either strategically or tactically. China said they had this ability, but only for research reasons and to deal with space junk. Worryingly though, they do have a satellite in service that can find other satellites and basically pull them out of space. 
A long time ago, military interests were mostly focused on the flight patterns of satellites. But modern changes have taken this area even further, and now thousands or even millions of important parts are connected in the public infrastructure of very advanced countries. It's important to note that this includes things that look like they aren't doing any harm, like communication satellites, GPS systems, which are the basis of guidance in modern devices and weather services. These things, which seem peaceful, can be used for two different things. They can be used for information gathering, and advanced military powers are aware of this. So, it's very important for these countries to deal with the fact that their enemies may have this possibly dangerous element in their arsenals. This understanding is what led to the creation of ASAT systems. Anti-satellite weapons have not been used in battle yet, but the US, China, India, and Russia, among other powerful countries, have shown what they can do by capturing and destroying their own satellites. This shows off how good they are at technology and shows that they are ready to protect their interests in the constantly changing space field. Because ASAT systems have many parts, they can be used in different ways. At the same time, they protect against threats from both space and nuclear weapons. In addition, they can be used to increase the power of the first nuclear attack, defend against enemy missile defenses, and respond in different ways to enemies with better technology. Back in the early 2000s, a discussion started because the US Space Security Commission did what Congress told them to do. The main subject of this conversation was the role that ASAT devices play in the complicated relationship between the US and China. The Commission was worried that China might be getting ready for a big attack on US satellites before they even happen. They made up the phrase Space Pearl Harbor and said that this strategy could be used as a form of asymmetric warfare to give China a clear edge over the US, even though China's military was weaker. China's successful test of another powerful anti-satellite weapon in January 2007 made the US even more worried. A Chinese FY1C weather satellite in orbit at 865 km above Earth was used as the target for this test. A ballistic weapon common in the US shot it down. Words used in the military to talk about the SC-19 with a kinetic bomb. Basically, this was a modified form of the DF-21, also known as the CSC-53, which is a two-stage solid fuel medium-range ballistic missile. There were several Chinese Feng Yun satellites launched in 1999, and the FY-1C was one of them. In the meantime, Russia was not going to be beaten. They brought out the Kamikaze satellite, which is actually called Cosmos 24.99. In 2014, this satellite had unmatched maneuvering skills that let it get close to other satellites and destroy or stop them. For starters, the US had been following it as a piece of space junk, but it suddenly came to life and flew very close to other satellites. These satellites can go as fast as 17,500. Mm. So, Kamikaze's ability to turn around suggested a clear goal. In 2017, Russia increased the number of satellites it had by launching another one that dropped a smaller one. In turn, this smaller satellite fired a projectile which is a clear sign that it could be used for war purposes. It's easy to see why these acts upset the United States, and they weren't happy with just watching. In 2019, after two years, Russia revealed the nesting doll satellite, which was the result of all their previous work. This new satellite could carefully move toward other satellites in space, keep an eye on them, put down a smaller satellite, and then fire a weapon. At one point, the nesting doll got too close to a U.S. satellite, which led to formal complaints to Russia. It's not a surprise that the Space Force was created near the end of that year. Satellites are very important to the United States for many important reasons. They currently have a mind-boggling 1,097 satellites in orbit, ahead of China with the Ford-12 and Russia with 176. For keeping an eye on threats, helping with navigation by land, air, and sea, surveillance, communications, finding and guiding missiles, and many other important jobs. These satellites are a must. In a strange way, they are not very safe while floating in space. Because the Pentagon knew this was a weakness, they asked for $304 million in the 2020 budget to support projects to make space weapons stronger. Since then, many tests have been done, mostly on directed energy weapons like 
lasers, and harmless particle beams. The United States has been working on directed energy weapons for decades, but recent events have raised the stakes. The U.S. military just finished its first real-world test of a laser in the Persian Gulf, and it went very well. At the speed of light, these laser beams destroyed objects on land and in the air. More tests are being done right now to improve laser weapons that can damage or degrade satellites from the ground or from fighter jets. With a budget of $155 million, the Air Force's self-protected high-energy laser program is made up of three main parts. Laser improvements for next-generation combat environments, the STRAF, self-protected high-energy laser control system, and Boeing's laser pod research, and development container. The military wants to pick the part that does the job for the least amount of money. It shouldn't be a surprise that the military is looking into this area of weapons. Lasers are great for military use because they have many benefits. They work as fast as light, are very accurate, and have almost infinite ammo for a low cost per shot. The Self-Protect High Energy Laser Demonstrator is one of the most exciting new aircraft laser weapons projects. It exists right now as a big display on the ground. But the U.S. Air Force has big plans to cut it down to a tiny pod that can be tried on an F-15 fighter and then added to F-16 and F-35 single-engine fighters in the future. If these airborne lasers work as well as expected, they could change the future of air fighting forever. As a defensive, active protection device, the self-protect high-energy laser is meant to destroy or slow down incoming air-to-air -air and surface-to-air weapons. For more than 200 miles away, long-range missiles like Russia's 48 and 6 surface-to-air missiles or R-37 air-to-air missiles are a major danger to support radar and tanker planes that are easily hit. At shorter ranges, 4th and 5th generation jet fighters can be seen on radar. Short-range rockets that are easier to avoid and move around have a pretty low DS between 20% and 30%. Now this is where lasers come in. It is possible for even a weak laser to accurately mess up or destroy the sensitive optical guidance systems of approaching missiles. Lasers that are stronger could hurt systems that control missiles or heat up and set off weapons. Very quickly, close to 20,000 miles per hour, which makes them very hard to hit. A laser weapon needs to be able to lock onto its target correctly in order to work. Tracking and aiming at things that are moving says of June 29, 2023, another amazing milestone in space technology had been reached. This was the celebration of two very important events. The Space Wireless Energy Laser Link, also known as SWELL, from the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory, has been working successfully in space for 100 days now. Happening at the same time as the NRL's 100th anniversary, SWELL started its trip into space on March 14, 2023. Its goal is a major step forward in the history of laser power beaming in space. It now lives on the International Space Station as part of a mission for the U.S. Department of Defense's space test program. SWELL has been sending about 1.5 watts of power continuously to the power beaming receiver's output. More importantly, this whole process is very efficient, with an average efficiency of about 11%. This accomplishment isn't just a small win, it's more than 10 times more efficient than the team's goals. SWELL can work at a distance of 145 meters for a power-bearing link. According to the NRL, this experiment is not only the first time laser power beaming has been used in space, but it is also the record holder for the highest power, longest distance, and most efficient power beaming display in orbit of any type. Space News said that China is getting ready to use lasers on the ground. Without a doubt, this is a big step forward because it could blind satellite sensors and even destroy satellite hardware structures. Still, these laser guns that can reach space from the ground might not be enough. As modern combat changes, space is becoming more and more like the main battlefield, which means that weapons that can be used in space are needed. In preparation for these changes, satellites will likely have both defensive and offensive weapons, such as the ability to remain hidden, the ability to move quickly, and a distributed design for defense. It is planned to launch an amazing 1,300 satellites, so even if some get hurt, the system won't be unable to work. On the attacking front, 
Work is being done on laser-equipped satellites that will blind sensors and break hardware. Laser technology has come a long way on Earth, but things are very different in space, making it a whole new sport. The question of power is one of the main problems with using laser weapons in space. Lasers need a lot of energy to make and keep the high-intensity beams that are needed for weapons to work. Power sources can be limited in space, and getting big energy stores to orbit is hard and expensive. This makes me wonder if it's really possible to keep laser guns powered all the time. Laser beams going through space which is empty is another enormous problem. Space is mostly empty, unlike Earth's atmosphere, where particles and molecules may combine with the laser to make a visible beam. So, the laser beam can't be seen, which makes it hard to exactly aim and track objects. The laser stream can also spread out over long distances, making it less useful. These satellites also move quickly needs complex systems that can respond quickly. It's important to note, though, that these problems can be solved. Russia has already made the Polya spaceship, which can carry a megawatt carbon dioxide laser, which is the most powerful continuous wave laser on the market right now. In the 1980s, during the Cold War, the Polyus first appeared in stories. When Ronald Reagan took office, he gave a moving and patriotic speech in which he emphasized that the United States was still fighting against oppressive governments. During this speech, he talked about a big plan for a space program that would send weapons into space. A missile shield that would protect the U.S. from enemy intercontinental ballistic weapons was the most important part of his plan. The somewhat insulting name Star Wars initiative was soon given to this big project. Mikhail Gorbachev, the head of the Soviet Union, was working for peace on the world stage on the other side of the Iron Curtain. He told Reagan that this was a bad idea, but the US president wouldn't change his mind. In an ironic turn of events, Soviet leaders told Reagan to go ahead with his missile program so that they would feel more pressure to do the same. Gorbachev finally gave his approval to an even bigger plan. The Polyus Skiff spaceship from Russia was the main part of this project. The scary name for it was the Red Death Star, and it was meant to be a space-based laser system that could fire at possible enemies in the event of a war. The whole world watched as a new type of war became possible. The Star Wars era was coming up quickly. This idea was different from what the space race was all about at first, which was competing with impressive technical advances to take over space. The project was a lot like the American Star Wars effort, but it had different goals. Using a powerful megawatt carbon dioxide laser, the polio skiff's main goal was to attack American missile defense systems. Aziv Siddiqui, a Soviet space researcher, told Dwayne Day of Air and Space magazine that the Soviet Union had put a lot of money into two big research and development projects in the late 1970 as an early 1980 set. The purpose of these studies was to look into ways to fight against made-up American missile defense ideas. From these efforts came two interesting ideas. Skiff, a laser gun that orbits in space, and Cascade, a weapon that shoots missiles at enemy satellites from another spacecraft. Energia, a well-known Soviet space company, had made a suggestion to the Kremlin by the middle of 1984. They wanted to use the guided missile base Cascade in their Skiff, which has lasers, as parts of a single system. In order to do this, they used an existing space station in a different way. The astrophysics company's enormous, potent laser was initially something that Soviet engineers considered adding. But this plan was too big for the rockets that are used now. Because of this, they went with Energia's idea and used the smaller skiff laser. This decision made it possible for the polio skiff project to start. In Russian, the name polios meant North Pole, and skiff was a reference to the Scythians, an old Central Asian warrior tribe. This project failed in the end, but it did raise the possibility of space to ground weapons, which is a scary idea. However, no such weapons are being made right now because of an international law that doesn't allow them to be used. Taking into account the possible effects of weapons in space, this pact makes perfect sense. Thanks for seeing this. Click on the link that shows up on your screen to watch another one of our fun videos. See you there.